Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Philip's in the Hills. My name is Mother Kelly, and I'm so glad that you're with us for worship this morning. Uh, we have a lot of things going on in the week up ahead, including online worship opportunities and formation opportunities. Um, there's also information about our anti-racism book club that's on Sunday afternoons and about a blood drive we have that's going to be happening at the church on July 5th. You can find more information about that on our website or especially by signing up for Bell and Tower, our weekly church newsletter. Uh, we hope that you will enjoy our service this morning and really consider your presence with us a blessing. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins. We may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works, for years long was I grieved with this generation. It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Truly, for your sake, have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my father's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up.
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the, war, but the Lord is with me like a dread warrior and therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, 
Thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. A reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Church of Rome. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide 
guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, for you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. So do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth, for I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. May I speak in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning's readings are intense. They don't pull punches and they don't sugarcoat things. Jeremiah is angry at God for giving him a message to proclaim that no one wants to hear. Paul tells the Romans that because their baptism unites them with Christ in his death, they should live as if they are completely dead to sin and free from it, and walk in a new way of life that is radically unlike the one they lived before baptism. And then there's Jesus, the Prince of Peace, explaining to his friends that if they follow him faithfully, the reward they can expect on earth is ridicule, scorn, anger, conflict, division, and death. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, he says. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. We don't deal much with swords these days, and for us they're mostly the stuff of history and fantasy novels. But for those who heard Jesus, swords were no metaphorical or historical reference. Many of his hearers would have owned swords and, well, the soldiers of the occupying Roman army, swords and all, would have been an ever-present reality for Jesus and his people. 
He continues speaking, and it doesn't get better or more comforting. He says he's come to set people against their own relatives, and that members of our households will become our enemies. Jesus says that we have to love him more than we love our families. He says that we have to love him more than we love being alive. This passage, I think, makes it very clear. Casual discipleship, where we follow Jesus when it's convenient, isn't an option on the table. And this is where I might lose you, but I pray that you'll hear me out on this. I don't believe that politically neutral discipleship is an option on the table either. In the summer of 1963, two Episcopal bishops in Alabama, along with other Christian leaders and one rabbi, wrote an open letter denouncing the protests organized by Martin King Jr., calling them unwise and untimely. They urged the Black community in Birmingham to reject Dr. King's, quote, extreme measures and referred to him as an outsider. They begged for the oppressed to use what they referred to as the proper channels. And it was this open letter to which Dr. King was responding in his letter from the jail in Birmingham. He said to them, I am in Birmingham because injustice is here. Just as the 8th century prophets left their little villages and carried their thus saith the Lord far beyond the boundaries of their hometowns, and just as the Apostle Paul left his little village of Tarsus and carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to practically every hamlet and city of the Greco-Roman world, I too am compelled to carry the gospel of freedom beyond my particular hometown. He goes on to say, I must confess that over the last few years I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. He then goes on to describe the white moderate of the 1960s with words I pray will not be true of us in 2020, saying that he is coming to believe that the great stumbling block standing in the way of the path to freedom for black Americans was not the Klansmen or the members of a white citizens council, but quote, the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically feels that he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. He then turns his criticism to white churches, specifically saying, I have watched white churches stand on the sidelines and merely mouth pious irrelevancies and sanctimonious trivialities. In the midst of a mighty struggle to rid our nation of racial and economic injustice, I have heard so many ministers say, those are social issues, which the gospel has nothing to do with. And I have watched so many churches commit themselves to a completely otherworldly religion, which makes a strange distinction between bodies and souls, the sacred and the secular. The contemporary church, he wrote, is so often a weak, ineffectual voice with an uncertain sound. It is so often the arch supporter of the status quo, far from being disturbed by the presence of the church. The power structure of the average community is consoled by the church's often vocal sanction of things as they are. Jeremiah says that the words of the Lord, pronouncing judgment upon his nation, are like a fire within his bones if he tries not to proclaim them. He has no choice, he explains, but to cry out violence and destruction. And surely every messenger of God would prefer to be given tidings of comfort and ease. I would prefer to preach a different sermon to you today, but it's like a fire shut up in my bones. Our communities are filled with violence and destruction, and our nation continues to enjoy the fruits of over 400 years 
of exploiting land we stole from native peoples with violence. Built upon with centuries of the labor of enslaved Africans we stole from their homes. And now sustained by paying poverty wages to the black and brown people who work in the service industry and the farming industry and the meat processing industry. It doesn't matter if we weren't personally present. Our obligation to work for an end to present oppression and to seek reparations for past exploitation from which our economy, from which we still benefit, exists simply because we are Christians and we claim to follow Jesus Christ. Because the God who became incarnate in Jesus of Nazareth, who died for our sins, is the same God who struck the entire nation of Egypt with plagues because they refused to free his children from their bondage. The law of God in the book of Exodus is clear. Whenever someone breaks the Eighth Commandment, you shall not steal. The person who is found in possession of the stolen goods is obligated not only to repay what was taken in full, but to make double restitution. We are living in sin as a society. And if we are not fighting to end injustice and racism at any cost, we are complicit in that sin and rebelling against the very will of Almighty God. Dr. King said the question is not whether we will be extremists, but what kind of extremists will we be? Will we be extremists for the preservation of injustice? Or will we be extremists for the cause of justice? Life in Christ means baptism into his self-sacrificial death, and it means living with the boldness of those who have learned to stop fearing those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the self, which belongs to God alone. We must ceaselessly proclaim and work for God's condemnation of injustice, just like Jeremiah and Amos and Isaiah, just like Jesus himself, even if it means we are maligned, even if it sets us against our parents or our children, even if it means losing the peace that is the absence of tension in favor of the sword of righteousness in the hand of Christ even if it means we must take up our cross, that ancient and terrible tool of the lethal violence of empire, and follow exactly where Christ has led, trusting in his promise never to leave or forsake us, and remembering that he has said that if we give up our lives for his sake, it's then that we will truly find him. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who created us in your own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom. Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
O Lord our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care that, being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in your fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of your grace, and that they may truly please you. Pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness we flee to you for succor. Deliver us, we pray, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, we pray for all who are on the parish prayer list. Pray for all whose lives are affected by COVID-19. Pray for all whose lives are affected by the Bighorn Fire. We pray, O oh Lord, for an end to racism and structures of oppression, dehumanization, and degradation. Beloved, I bid your prayers and intercessions now by the sign of the Lord aloud. O God, the creator and preserver of all humanity, we humbly beseech you for all sorts and conditions of your children, that you would be pleased to make your ways known unto them, your saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for your holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit and the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings, and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>